What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I say welcome back. It's more of a welcome back for me than it is for you, if I'm being honest. For those of you that may not know, I have been away in the south of France for the past few days. All the videos have been going up as scheduled. I think it's all been going well. You've all seemed to enjoy them, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, if my voice sounds a little bit croaky, that is probably why. When I was out there, I did realize though that the only real way that I can get in contact with you guys regularly is not through YouTube, but through other social medias. So those of you that are following me, over on Twitter. You knew exactly what I was up to. Twitter is the best place to get in contact with me, guys, and interact, that is for sure. And then I decided it was probably a good idea to start an Instagram account as well for those of you that enjoy more visual stuff and seeing what I get up to day to day. So yeah, it's on screen right now. You can go down in the description and follow me over there. To be fair, if you follow me now, you'll be within the first 1,000 followers I have over there. So what an incentive that is. But overall, guys, yeah, it's great to be back. I'm very excited to start making videos again. Let's get straight into this one. My entitled stay Stepmom demands key to my soon-to-be house. For a quick reference, there are five people in this event. My mum, my stepdad, my dad, my entitled stepmom, and me. A little bit of backstory. My stepmother and I never got along from day one, especially when she turned into a more and more entitled stepmom. This was as I got into my later teenage years and was the reason I moved out of my father's house to live full-time with mum, despite their custody agreement. The details aren't important, but the list is a hefty one. The important one for this account is snooping. My entitled stepmom has to stick her nose in my life, room, car, job, health, etc. to a comical degree. She has also done some pretty pointless petty things, like giving me a false key to her and my dad's house when it got rekeyed, for reasons I still don't understand. This is also important. On to the most recent entitled stepmom moment that happened on the 11th of August 2020. This is a phone call from my entitled stepmom to me. I want a key to your house when it closes. Uh, no. What? No, you will give me a key. A key or a fake key? You weren't specific. A real key to the house. And why would I do that, given your track record? Because I'm your parent. Quit being flippant. I just start laughing at this point. I don't see what's so funny, OP. I'm asking for a key and I will get one. Asking? You're demanding a key off your 25-year-old stepson who owes you nothing. Oh yeah, I'll want my dresser back too, as we agreed upon all those years ago. I'm not giving you the dresser back unless you give me a key. So you're gonna steal from me because the dresser couldn't make it up the stairs and you are throwing a fit because I won't let you snoop? Young man, you have a history of making poor choices and it's my job to correct them. I couldn't do it while you were in Ohio and now that you're back, I will get you back on the straight and narrow. I should point out that my poor choices involved eating in my room while doing homework, watching TV with my girlfriend when I was a teenager, and not going to bed by 10 p.m. She's a nutty conservative Christian woman who gets mad at me for anything that isn't in her micron-sized list of appropriate actions for me. You won't be getting a key and because of you, dad won't likely get one because you can't be trusted and i ended the call not five minutes later my mum and stepdad are rolling on the floor laughing because she had called them demanding that they talk some sense into me and make me give her a key neither my mother nor stepfather can stand my entitled stepmother here is where my stepmother truly shines though rather than just being demanding and a snoop it happened the following day on the 12th it's important to know I'm high as anything on painkillers after my back spasms sent me face first into the floor from their strength. Wow. My entitled mum says, Hey, OP, have you thought about giving me a key? Nah, you don't get one. Even for your favorite step parents? I'm laughing hysterically. What? I like cat poop more than I like you. Fine, you will lose your car. I forbid you from driving and I'll expect your keys tonight. Um, you want to take the keys to a car you don't own or pay anything on because you won't take no for an answer? I am your parent. I hung up after she started yelling. She showed up at my mother's house 10 minutes later, demanding my keys to my car because she was revoking her permission for me to drive. And we had to call our neighbor, the off-duty cop, to come over and speak to her. I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to put a lien on my car. More insane things have happened. It's so bad that my dad is agreeing that he shouldn't get a key but won't leave her because of her usual entitled behavior. This is just the most recent in a long list of this kind.
kind of behavior. Well, yeah, sounds like a pretty amazing stepmom in my opinion. Um, to be honest, I just want to hear more stories about her because she sounds truly terrible. Let's be honest. I mean, I don't understand this. Firstly, she wants a key to your house, which isn't hers. Then she wants a key to your car, which still isn't hers. Um, what more could she want? I don't know, a key to your life? What, what, what more can you want in this situation? I also like that she's asking for a key to her stepson's house when she didn't even give him a real key to her house. How does that make any sense? It's just a total lack of privacy and a total lack of respect for your stepson. Oh yeah, just a, just a very strange woman. Now moving on to our next story, but my baby wants to swim. This just happened a few hours ago, so I'm pretty frustrated still. So a bit of backstory. I was with my grandfather at this new fishing pond in town. They just put a bunch of catfish in it. He's had a really rough time lately, and I thought I could help by spending the day with him after my grandmother committed suicide. Wow. Firstly, I just got to say, OP, I- I'm so sorry that happened. That's horrible. We were set up on the bank into some brush where the catfish like to hide, and we had a pretty boring morning. But my grandpa always loved fishing, so it was really calming and relaxing. Well, we were talking about going and getting some lunch and coming back when a pair of guys came down asking if we wanted some sandwiches, since the rest of their group didn't show up. We, being hungry, took two of the sandwiches and invited the boys to fish with us. By this time, we were pretty successful, reeling one in every couple minutes. They happily agreed and we had a good time when one of the boys had an emergency with his girlfriend. I guess she was pregnant and couldn't get off the couch. After they left, we spent the next 30 or so minutes in complete silence when an entitled mum and her entitled kid come along. The conversation went as follows. Excuse me, can my son swim here? My grandpa said, I'm sorry, we've got our lines in and if you get in here, you could tangle them or get hooked. The kid said, but I want to swim in the corn dogs. He was referring to the cattails. You know, if you do that, you'll scare all the fish away and might get something stuck in your foot. How dare you tell my son what he can and can't do? She points at the cattails. You go ahead and play in the corn dogs, baby. Hey, you're going to scare away the fish. I don't care. You can go fish somewhere else. Okay, Karen. We started reeling our lines in when this kid tries to grab onto one of the hooks because it's pretty. Thankfully, he missed, but my grandpa told him not to do that, and we left that area before the entitled mum could scold us for tormenting her baby. We ended up on the other side of the pond before we threw our lines in again. Not even 20 minutes later, I feel a tap on my shoulder. I was napping with a hat over my eyes at the time. Huh? What? It was the entitled mum. My baby was wondering if he could fish with you guys. Um, I'm gonna go with no. This gear is really expensive and it's not a toy. Please, he really wants to learn how to fish like a pro. Sorry, but I just can't trust strangers with my stuff. And if you wake my grandpa, he'll be cranky and will definitely say no. Oh, come on, it can't be that hard and he'll be super careful. After that, I basically told her to F off kindly and bungeed our poles to my chair just in case and went back to sleep. A while later, my grandpa told me we should probably go and we packed up our stuff. On our way back, we passed the entitled mum and her kid without even acknowledging them. While the little boy cried, he wanted the shiny on the end of my stick. We were about to reach the car when I feel a tug on my pole and a scream behind us. The entitled kid had grabbed the treble hook on the end of my pole and now had it lodged into his hand. The entitled mum ran over screeching like a banshee about how we had hurt her baby and we were irresponsible and blah blah blah. Finally, my grandpa crouched down to inspect the hook. All the barbs have gone through his hand. I'm gonna have to cut them off. The entitled mum rips her kid away, which in turn pulls on the hook in the kid's hand. Oh my God, how dare you touch my son? I will call the cops on you, you pedo. Shame on you. What would your wife think of this? I bet she would be dis- My grandpa cut her off. For your info, my wife committed suicide less than a month ago and I came here for the day to relax. And instead, I have to deal with an entitled female dog and an idiot kid. So if you do not want your kid to get an infection, then I suggest you STF you and let me do my thing before you complain about anything else. The entitled mum scoffs. Oh, fine, but you better not touch him. My grandpa grabbed the pole and just cut the line, leaving the hook in the kid's hand. We started walking away when she spoke up. 
Hey, aren't you gonna take it out? I don't want my baby getting sick. It's kind of hard taking out a hook without touching someone. I would suggest going to the ER as soon as you can, but judging your character, he might lose his hand from you talking to someone in the lobby. We got to the car when the entitled mum looked my grandpa in the eye and said, if I was your wife, I would have killed myself too and walked off. I ended up having to drive us home because my grandpa was in tears. It's sad how many people in this world don't understand how hurtful saying something like that to a person is. It breaks my heart. Yo, what the f- How can she say that? Oh my god. That is one of the most horrible things I've ever heard someone say. Jesus Christ, that has rattled me. Oh man, um, wow, I'm actually speechless after that. Uh, yeah, to your granddad, I'm, I'm firstly, I'm sorry that your wife committed suicide. That's obviously horrible. And then for this person to say that to you, you know, compounding your already obvious misery when they don't even know you and you've not done anything to harm them, you've actually offered to help. Jesus, what sort of person would do this? Oh, wow. I don't like, I don't want to say this, but it's these sort of people that I feel like should go through the misery that others like your grandfather have to go through. It's just not really fair that she can get away with being this horrible to someone and then not have that same trauma put upon herself. It's not the right thing to say, you know, it's not that you shouldn't wish, uh, you know, dramatic experiences on other people, but how can you get away with saying something like this? It's just horrible and it's, it's obviously ruined your grandpa's day. What a horrible lady. As you can see from this comment on screen right now, now, a lot of people below are a little bit more angry than I am. I'm, I'm just more not, you know, not disappointed for that old trope, but I'm just like sad that this person would say such a horrible thing. It's just, it's just a lack of awareness, just a lack of respect for someone, and also obviously just a, a lack of empathy and an understanding that, that he's gone through something so so horrible. You know, it's bad enough losing your wife, but to suicide, you know, imagine the thoughts going through your head when that happens. Wow, just yeah, I, I don't disagree with this comment on screen too much. I'll be honest. Anyway, guys, uh, that is going to do it for the end of this video. My first video back in a while. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Um, A bit of a vulgar ending, but apart from that, a couple of very entertaining stories. As I said in the intro, go and follow me over on Twitter, on Instagram. Links are both down below, especially on Instagram. I'm really enjoying it at the moment. And, you know, it's fun showing videos, showing photos of what I'm up to outside of YouTube. So, yeah, if you do want to go and follow me, links down below. Also, remember to subscribe if you are new to my channel and watch some more videos on screen right away if you have some more spare time. Without all being said, I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new upload. Same time, same place.